welcome back. Um, we're going to talk some more about the photo merge tools in Adobe Lightroom Classic. This time I want to talk to you about the HDR or High Dynamic Range tool. You may have run into circumstances, we did, we, I described this in the histogram videos, circumstances where uh, you want to record something that has a deep shadow and a bright highlight and your camera really can't do both. You're going to either clip the highlights or you're going to lose detail in the shadows, uh, clip the shadows and create a lot of noise there. So one solution for this is uh, doing multiple photos and melding them together in an HDR photo, high dynamic range, because that's what we're talking about is how, what is the limitation of the dynamic range of your camera. And when we do this, we actually extend that dynamic range so that we can bring brighter highlights and deeper shadows together. Okay, well, let's take a look at this uh, HDR photo that I made on a field trip. Uh, this is, uh, I just thought this was a very sweet photo in a room I was in with the, the clock and the little strange object, a little sculpture there and the shadow. Uh, and I knew when I looked at this scene that uh, I wanted the window, I wanted that scene of all the greenery outside the window. And if I zoom, you zoom in, you'll see we also have this wonderful screen. Uh, there's just a lovely detail there. I wanted all of that, but I knew that I would not get it with a single photo because the contrast, the difference in uh, dynamic range between this area and this area was way too high. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's go to the next image. Oops, let's not. So let me show you what I mean by that. I am going to unstack this photo so that you can see, just as with the panorama, I like to stack these up, keep them all together. So this is the DNG, this is the finished HDR. These are the four photos that I took in order to make it. And let's just take a look at the first one and, and go through and see what I did. So this is the photo that I took, um, single photo. Uh, and you can see that I have just enough. Let's go to the develop and you can see the histogram here. I have just enough range on that. I got the shadows in quite nicely. But the shadows, the highlights are definitely starting to clip. And even if I can bring those back in, I'm going to lose a fair amount of detail. So what I want to do is I want to create a series of exposures uh, that uh, change the exposure with each, with, with each one until I get a series of photos that go down to capturing this layer here. Now you can just do two and do it, but you will get um, a richer photo with a lot more detail if you do three or more. In this case, I did four. So this first photo was captured at a 60th of a second. Now, I apologize. There's no aperture in this because this is a fully manual lens that I use, and it does not record the aperture metadata. But I do have the, uh, I do have the shutter speed. And for HDR, the shutter speed is what you want to pay attention to. You don't want to change the aperture when you do these because that will change the depth of field. So you just want to change the shutter speed. So I started at a 60th of a second. And with the next one, I went to 125th. I'm taking it down by a stop with each one. And the next one, I went to 1250th. And you can see we're starting to really lose a lot of those shadows. But we're starting to really see a lot of the highlights. And then the very last one is 1500th. Now, what I generally do is that I want to start by metering and exposing my shadow. So I make a photograph that's just for the shadows, and then I keep shutting down until I get a photograph that captures the highlights just where I want them. So you see I have both of those. So now I know I have enough photos for the HDR. Now I can't held that, and that uh, can create some problems, but Lightroom software is super smart, so you'll see that there's a solution to that as well. So I'm not selecting this one because this is the completed one. I just want to select the four that I shot originally. Notice these are all NEFs. These are raw files, but the final product will be a DNG. And I'm going to go back up to Photo Merge, and this time I'm going to pick HDR. And there, there is, of course, a shortcut for that as well. Now I have all the settings off except for create stack. So let's just see what happens. Um, oh, I should have had the D ghost off, but that's okay. We can play with that. 
And again, it takes it a minute. I might have to do a little cooking show magic if it gets too stubborn. Um, the preview is the first part and then the merge, but the, the preview could take a second. Uh, this is hard work that Adobe Lightroom has to do, uh, trying to put together all of these images. So we'll just give it a second. Oh, going very fast. And there it is. Okay, much better. Now, you notice it doesn't look like the final version that I have, and that's because um, of a couple of things that I'll, I'll show you how to adjust here. I don't think the deghosting matters. We'll just leave it on medium, but I'll talk about that. Um, but one of the things that I do want to do is auto align. I don't know how badly it is, uh, but it looks like it's a little bit off and that's because I handheld it. And so if I don't auto align it, it's going to just put those images together as they are. So I want to auto align. And we might, there we go. And that is going to help to bring all those images together. It's going to actually find the edges and bring it together. Now you can do auto settings. Uh, I usually don't like to, but let's let's actually just see what it does. And it's not bad in this case. We'll go ahead and use it. We can um, actually go, go in and adjust some more. I like how it's actually brought up a lot of uh, the shadows here. It's got beautiful detail in the highlight here, which is what I wanted, and it's left this here. It's a little bit sort of hot on the curtains, but I'll go ahead and do it and then I can adjust it later because it will have enough information in this final DMG file for me to actually work with. Now the deghost, it's on medium now, and if I change it to none, I don't think it's going to change anything about this file. I can't imagine it will. What the deghost will do though, that can be really, you can either leave it off or play with it, is if there's something that moves or changes or walks through your screen, it will actually eliminate that so that it looks like a still. Yeah, the, the ghosting didn't make any difference here because nothing walked across my scene. But if, uh, I once had a person walk through while I was doing an HDR and it removed that person for me. Okay, so once you're done with that, just go ahead and click Merge. And again, it's going to be working up here. And uh, it will, and I'll see how it compares to that fun because I don't remember how much I developed that earlier one. We can look at them together. And it's going pretty quickly. Again, you could create, create an HDR with as many photos as you want to make at different exposures. Uh, you can create a wider dynamic range or, 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 or a slower dynamic range, whichever one it, that you would like to do. And there we go. Actually, it looks like I was, I think I did choose this the last time. So here's the new one. And here's the other one. Oh, interesting. It aligned them differently. And uh, that is very interesting to see. This one, you notice, I think I went in with the earlier one. And um, I will go to the develop. And I believe, yes, I pulled the highlights down a little bit more for me. Let's go to this one. And I would take the highlights down a little bit more. Now, that is a fascinating thing. I think it would be, uh, I, I, I've, I've done a little bit of this, but every time you actually do an HDR, it makes slightly different choices. So it's an interesting process. Okay, it's subtle. You won't look at this photo and go, oh my God, it's HDR, uh, which is kind of what I like about it. Okay, I'll show you just one more example of an HDR. This is sort of the same scene. I mean, you can do HDR uh, even if you don't have this high dynamic range of, uh, of tones, and it's, it can be quite beautiful. Uh, but that is typically what I like to do. This one um, I was especially happy with. I shot this out in Mare Island, and I loved the uh, banister and the window, and I wanted the view outside. I didn't want to lose that. And so I'll go back to the grid view and open this up. So. I shot quite a few photos here. I started to make sure that I got everything. So my first um, photo was at a one hundredth of a second. Oops, and it looks like, am I going in the wrong direction? 
And and that's right. I remember this happening. Let me put it here. Okay, so let's keep clicking show. So let's see how this one, uh, how this looked, how I shot it. So it's that same lens again. I apologize. I love this lens, but it does not show you my aperture. But again, it doesn't matter because I don't want to change my aperture, especially in this. I'm actually doing a little tilt shift. And if I change the aperture, it's going to change that effect. And I want that to be the same. So this one is at a thousandth of a second. And there we go. Oh, I had an extra one in there. This one is at 800, 400, 200, 100. And you notice I really was able to pull up those shadows. I think that's the last one. Yes, that is the last one. So the very last one has so much detail in the banister. The very first one which is very dark in the banister, has all that beautiful detail in the windows. And so the final image looks like this. And I developed it afterwards to get that balance that I wanted. I didn't want it quite as bright as I could take it. Um, I had all this great control. OK, so that is it. Both HDR and Pano, have. there are some advantages to shooting on a tripod if you want them to line up more precisely. But because of the sophistication of the tools in Adobe Lightroom, you can shoot these handheld as long as you are at a shutter speed that you can handhold with your lens. Um, so there you go. Oops, let's go out of there. Uh, that is the um, and and so there you go. That is the final result. Great, uh, exciting tools. Of course, remember that with HDR and with panorama, if you have things that are moving through the scene, it isn't impossible, but it changes changes things and makes them kind of interesting. So go and experiment, see what you can do.